What's up, YouTube? Reno here. <clears throat> this is actually the second part to the video I just posted. Um, you notice I look different than I did in that video. I mean, well, my shirt's different and my beard's shorter, which sucks. Um, <clears throat> it's because I didn't realize this on the camera I use, but it has like a 10 minute uh, limit to videos. I don't know if I can change it or not, but so at the 10 minute mark it cut off and so back when I recorded the first video which was like three weeks ago now um, it cut off on me and um, at the time I just got frustrated and I was like ah fuck it I don't want to deal with this right now so I kind of forgot about it and then I was like oh I should probably post a video so I decided instead of just re-recording the whole thing I would just post part two which will be this part um, so in that video as you probably just saw I was talking about um, the Red Wedding, and uh, the part I think I was talking about at the end was when, um, well, first, sorry, let me do a little housekeeping. I am smoking the same pipe that I was smoking in that video, and the same tobacco, which is honeymead. And just a little thing I wanted to point out, um, my girlfriend made these labels for me from my jars. They're pretty cool. She's very crafty. I love her. Anyway, so yeah, Boswell, Jumbo Lava, Honeymoon, <clears throat> and this time I'll have a little music for you. So, the Reigns of Castamere start playing, and um, at that point, Catelyn's like, alright, what the fuck's going on? Why are they playing this song right now? She knows what the Reigns of Castamere is about and what happens. <clears throat> she was already suspicious of Walter Frey, so um, right now she's trying to put shit together in her head. So you see her, she walks back over to where, um, what's his face? Uh, Lord Bolton is sitting which is basically Rob Stark's right-hand man right now in the show. And she kind of looks at him, and he kind of has, like, this shit-eating grin on his face, like, well, obviously, he knows what's about to go down. And she kind of, like, lifts up his sleeve a little bit, because she suspects that he's wearing armor, and he is. And um, nobody else is wearing armor, so she's like, okay, well, why is he wearing armor? And so at that point, she realizes that she, that he betrayed Rob, that's why she stands up and slaps him. And then at that point, she just starts going down. The band has crossbows. They start shooting everybody. They hit Rob. They hit Catelyn. They hit pretty much all of his men. And uh, Walter Frey is just sitting there having the time of his life watching. And uh, Lord Bolton kind of took off right before it happened. Like he jumped around the corner. And so, it's all going down, you know, getting people getting shot. Actually, I think I made a mistake. Before anybody gets shot, uh, one of the Freys, one of Walter Frey's sons, comes over and stabs Talisa in the stomach, basically killing her child and killing her at the same time, which is very gruesome. That wasn't in the book. Um, in fact, Talisa isn't even there in the book. She stayed in the Riverlands with um, Catelyn's uncle. The Blackfish, which he was also at the wedding, but in the book he stayed in the Riverlands. So in the book she doesn't die, at least she hasn't yet. So anyways, so Rob sees that after he gets shot and he kind of crawls over to her and is trying to, I don't know if he's trying to comfort her or just basically he's in shock and he doesn't know what to do, which is probably more than likely. And then you see um, Catelyn kind of crawl over to where Walter Frey is sitting and drag his wife under the table, which I thought was pretty badass. <laughs> and uh, she ends up picking her up and holding a knife to her throat and basically trying to bargain for her son's life, saying, you know, if you let Rob live or leave, one, we won't retaliate, 
which I think is a BS. Obviously, they probably would have retaliated because at least Rob would have, even if Catelyn advised him not to. But anyway, it's besides the point. So she says, we won't retaliate, and um, I won't kill your wife if you let my son live. Or, no, basically, she says, first, she won't, she says, we won't retaliate. And then he's like, then she starts telling Rob to leave. And Frey is like, well, why would I let Rob leave? Like, he can't leave. And she's like, because if you don't, I'm going to kill your wife. And he's like, whatever, I'll get another one. <laughs> just cold-blooded, but in the book, like, that's how he is. He's just a massive douche. He doesn't care about anyone, even his family to extent. He cares about his family name, but in the book, Catelyn's not holding his wife hostage. She's holding one of his sons. And even then, he's like, I have lots of sons. Go ahead, kill them. That one's kind of worthless anyway. So you can see he's just kind of a cold, calculating douchebag. Um, and so, Lord Bolton ends up coming over and finishing Rob off. Which, and then he kind of drops the line, like, the Lannisters send the regards, basically saying that, you know, they set this up, so. So he kills Rob. Catelyn, like, loses it at that point. She just, like, you can see her mind just slips, and she just she cracks. But right before, she kind of falls on her knees and just sinks into a hole. She kills his wife, which, you know, she kind of had to do. And then you see one of the phrase come over and slit her throat. And that's the end of that. Or is it? So a lot of people were upset about that scene. I think mostly because they killed off two of the main characters. And those are two characters that a lot of people liked. That's the thing you have to understand about those books, though. George R. Martin doesn't give a shit who you like or who you don't like. He's gonna kill off who he wants to kill off in order to further the story, make it one more compelling and more interesting. Because people are so used to like these stories where you know there's a hero or heroes and then there's villains and a bunch of bad stuff happens. And even though even it it doesn't matter what happens in the story, you always know the hero is gonna prevail in the end. And with these books, you don't know that. I mean, the bad guys, I guess the quote-unquote bad guys, I guess would be the Lannisters. They might win. I don't know. I mean, the books aren't done yet. And that's what makes it so compelling is because, you know, in regular shows and movies and books, for the most part, you know the hero's going to win in the end. Through all the adversity and everything else, he's going to come out on top, or she. And then everything's going to be okay. And that's what people expect, and that's what people... I don't know if that's what people generally like. I think generally that's what people like. But it's just it's too cliche, and it's too predictable. And that's why, you know, television and movies are somewhat boring now. Unless you have a director or a writer who's willing to take a risk, you get these just washed out, you know, predictable shows. If you look back at like the most popular and interesting shows in the last, you know, five to ten years, it's been those ones who are willing to take.